Hello and welcome to our second podcast. And this week is going to be just as exciting as last week. We got we're continuing our Deadpool um, uh, X-Men, saga, X Men, yeah. de- you know, mutant solids, mutant solids you know, yeah. world of fantasy. Yes. Um, and as you can hear, David uh, Bethke is again with me in the mm. studio, and uh, we're going to be talking. Um, how's, how's your week been? Is it uh, we shaping up well on the uh, Patreon stuff? Doing really well on the Patreon stuff. We're also doing really well on the video stuff. I'm uh, excited for everyone to see how they can train once again from home and everything like that. Uh, and yes, the Patreon's doing uh, shaping up really well. Uh, I'm excited to see all the awesome, really cool stuff that all our patrons will be able to uh, get from all of this. And some of the comments too that they, you know, obviously those of you that haven't looked at it yet. Uh, you know, you can also comment on some of the things that may help you. Uh, our goals uh, for the month, we give mm-hmm. you a goal, and we're following it up every week to make sure you're on the goal. Just just to give you some inspiration, because I think we all need a little bit of inspiration to move ourselves forward. How many times do you actually go to the gym and you go, "Oh, I've got to go to the gym," mm-hmm. and it's until somebody says, "Oh, did you work out today?" Because we've got to go and do X, and you go, "Oh yeah, I've got to do that." It reminds you a little bit to right. move forward. Yes, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, so. Th- and also, if any of you out there have any success stories, whether you've been to a, a sword experience before, write us a short paragraph about uh, you know what that success is, and we'll read it out on the podcast here mm-hmm. and uh, uh, share it with uh, the other people so that they can get some uh, inspiration from your inspiration, yeah. which uh, I think is always important to hear other people's stories as to what certain movements or certain things benefited them. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing I'm actually really excited, I don't think we discussed this last week, uh, are the live hangouts. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah once, a, once a month, mm-hmm. I'm going to be live hanging out with you. I'm hanging out, dude. <laughs> As Ethan Detmeyer said to me last week, you know, I'm st- uh, stereotypically, what is it, st- what do you call it, stereotypically, Stereoty- socially? Uh, what was s- it? So, actually, oh, there he is. He's looking at me. Yeah, he's, he's still it. <laughs> I'm not sure what I called you last you week. Co- oh, okay, he's forgotten. He, he's, he's here as well. The insults are just flying yeah, around. Just flying. Yeah. Can't keep that, track of all but that, But that happens between me and Ethan. We always, we're kind of like... But, Insult jabs, each other jabs, here and there, jabs. but jab, jab, jab. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so um, I'm uh, uh, not doing uh, my uh, stereotypical accent this morning. <laughs> but um, Stefan has an accent. Obviously, he's from. Yeah. Uh, he's a, he's he's a um, um, uh, an actor from uh, Europe, uh, Croatia. Actually, I had a chat with him again. I met him also at uh, the um, the convention. Really nice guy, big guy, tall guy. Um, but you know, when you when you see things, because obviously the the character he played, he doesn't look like that, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-mm. He that was that was actually you know special effects. Oh, he's not a metal man. No, no, he's not. <laughs> he's, he's not he, and he's a lot softer than yeah, that. It's, yeah. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's uh, he's tall, obviously, and and he was he talks about how the um, the special effects come in into effect in that movie and how. You know, they had to ask him to do certain things. Did he have to do like movements and everything? Yeah, of like course. That? Yeah, I mean, that's that's you know, you get to, uh, and the technology is changing constantly mm. these days. That you know, they have you know, for instance, do you, do you remember the Revenant? Yeah. When you were the Revenant and the bear in the Revenant, mm. that bear, yeah. you're sitting there going, "Oh my God, how did they get a bear to do that?" <laughs> you can't fathom. <laughs> but the way they do that is they actually have a guy in a green suit mm-hmm. with dots all over him, right? And they he does all the movements. They choreograph those movements mm-hmm. about what they're going to do, and then they just put the bear in over his suit. Yeah. And and you sit there going, marveling at it. Right. Well, one thing I learned about Colossus. This was years ago. I think it was when Deadpool two came out. Was Colossus is actually five people. Uh, so Stephen Kapicic provides the voice for Colossus, I'm pretty sure. Then they have an incredibly tall person on set. Then they have someone doing the facial animations. Then they have someone doing the motion capture. And I think they have someone else as doing as a body scan. So Colossus is a compilation of five people. So it's a combi- which combination is of different yes. people. Yeah. So and then Stephen Kapicic provides the wonderful voice of Colossus. Yeah, he I does. He does. I mean, but he was on set. He was also on set yes. doing some of the some yes. of it as well. So yes. They, okay. I think they had different. Um, and it's interesting because I think that movie wasn't that the movie where they did it from, they did it backwards where they showed them dying first, and then what was that? Well, no, that was what movie was that? No, that was it was that one, wasn't it? I where, believe- where they go through the they go through the grinder. They've got the uh, yes, right? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So they go through the, and they show that at the beginning of the movie and mm-hmm. kind of figure out what is that, and then they right. kind of explain it as you go along right. as to why it happened that yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. No, and I love the way I love it when they do stuff like that because it's like, how did they get there? And then it slowly all comes together. So, 
Well, listen, um, without further ado, let's, uh, let's uh, hear um, S- Stefan's take on uh, the movies, on um, his, his role in talking comics, being a comic book geek, which <laughs> I kind of, kind of like the fact that he was a comic book geek. And, you know, he, actually, you know, he told me when he went out to um, uh, do the, the, the audition, mm-hmm. he kind of figured out his character because he knew the comic books and he kind of tried to put pieces together right. because they weren't telling him which character he was actually playing. Really? But then he kind of figured it out mm-hmm. based on his knowledge. And so obviously he was super excited That's great. about having fulfilled two passions, comic books and acting mm-hmm. all at the same time. Mm-hmm. Anyway... Stefan Kapacic, this is your moment. Hello again. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> let's talk about this. I want to talk, talk, let's, talk, let's talk about Deadpool first of all, because obviously mm-hmm. that's what a lot of people know you from. And uh, you went to, you mentioned you went to uh, Los Angeles, first of all, in yeah. like 15 years ago uh, yeah. to, for a Luke Besson movie. What one, what one was that? It's called Tears for Sale. Tears for Sale, right. And then you've been in LA ever since. Uh, yes, I've been making some like you know gaps in between filming some things in, in all around the Europe, in Germany, in uh, in Croatia, in Serbia, but I'm mainly based in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. and you know I've been doing like of course with Deadpool and Deadpool Two, I've been doing um, Better Call Saul, Counterpart, Twenty Four, uh, Love, Death, and Robots. For example, my last project <clears throat> is Call of Duty: The Modern Warfare, which just came out and it's like breaking records, a video game. But you know I have like a character that I play, and which is, and he is totally my likeness and you know my voice and everything else so I, first time that I've seen like literally digi- digitalized me <laughs> which is like a really great experience so I have like a few projects coming up coming out next year and you know for Netflix for AMC and so in between I'm doing these comic cons and meeting amazing people like you and you know uh, but so, so tell me you, you said something earlier which is kind of fun you're a big fan of the, of the comics yes why Why? What, what, do, what do comics do for you uh, but well, they might, they made my childhood better in so many ways, and you know, I'm I'm one of the people that just uh, the things that comic books. Well, first of all, they are art, and they are uh, they, they just make make your imagination, and in, 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 they just upgrade you in so many ways. Mm-hmm. So when I was a kid in ex Yugoslavia, comic books were like really important things, and 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 I remember my grandpa taking me and buying me my first like uh, Marvel comics. And you know, like there was like a huge bunch of them, and, and uh, a bunch of them, and you know, I was like, which one should I take? And my grandpa was like, come on, take them all. So, you know, I will never forget how happy I was at that moment. I was maybe like ten or something, but I will never forget. And the first one that I got was Wolverine, I think number fifty, which was like with a claws ripping through the front page. So, you know, those are like things that I will never forget. I'm forty-one now, and that happened like thirty or something years ago. But I can totally recall the exact moment of. of so you, did, you saw Wolverine at that point, yes. which is something that Chris Claremont actually uh, created, who's here as well at the con. He's a legend. He's yeah, like, it's, it's, amazing. it's amazing. I mean, so uh, Wolverine's a great character. Is it? Because is that? I mean, obviously you've, you've looked at a lot of the characters in X Men as well, but mm-hmm. is he kind of like the one you? Because you, that's the first one you've just mentioned. Yeah, that's, is that that's, the kind of the the one you like the most? That's one of my favorite ones. You know, like and it, it's like books in so many ways. Every like every part of your life has its own favorite character. You know, but the one which you start with first, it was always like Wolverine and of course Batman from DC. It, those are kind of you know characters that you kind of get get into. Not Spider Man, not Hulk, but these two are for me. Right. I love Punisher in, later on, and you know then you go into more adult comics and, you know, in a way, like Sin City from Frank Miller or uh, Watchmen, yeah. which we have like Dave Gibbons who did the Watchmen with, with uh, Alan Moore. Those are like these guys that are here at Athens Comic Con, including you. You guys are like really legends and then... We're legends in our own mind, that's okay. No, no <laughs> well, in my mind too, which, yeah. Comes to... so, so let's talk a little bit about Deadpool, how you got Deadpool. Mm-hmm. What, what happened? How did that process go? Uh, well. It, I was I was doing a theater performance in Croatia, Romeo and Juliet, and I just got like some you know additional lines for a top secret project, which was named Wham in the beginning, and I thought it's a George Michael biopic, which which was was not that you know that I wasn't that crazy about it. But then again, you know I did some takes, sent it back to 20th Century Fox, but on the second callback. They told me that I need to change the, the the names and the lines, and you know, instead of calling the partner George, I should say Wade. Which kind of for me as a comic book geek, they told me that it's a superhero movie. So the only way that it exists is Wade Wilson, and and that's Deadpool. 
So you already got a kind of an inkling yes. that it was going to be that. <laughs> yeah, and my character name was Timur, and he's like a Russian superhero. He's a father figure again. <laughs> uh, uh, but you know, it's I thought that's, that can be only Colossus, so I did like 140 takes for you know. And for just, them? Yes. There's 140 takes you yeah. did for them. <laughs> yes, but I had. Was it the same four. monologue? Same monologue. But just so wait a minute, you did 140 takes, what, and, and then you chose 100 out of... I just and chose four. And you sent that to them? Yes. And oh. my wife helped me and, you know, some of my friends, because it's like, you know, listening to yourself, 140 takes. There's like so many... Variants. Va yes, and so many, the same ones. So you just have to pick which are like the ones that you feel best, and you cannot do it by yourself. But then again, thank God that worked. So they flew me back just for one day. To Los Angeles from Europe just to film it and you know they were like thank you you know don't call us we'll call you the old thing but they called me seven days later and from that moment on you know I'm living I have to say some sort of a dream because as a comic book geek I love to say that I successfully combined my big two loves which are comic books and, 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 and acting of course and so once you got the role how long did you shoot for and you, sh you shot in Los Angeles? Yeah, no, in Vancouver. In Vancouver. Of course, cool, so you can do a lot more in Vancouver, yeah, can you? The course. tax breaks are better there. Okay, yeah, yeah. Which I, yeah. yeah but nobody we actually are, knew that. We understand that. Yeah, huh? no, back, in the, back in the 70s, there was no film industry in Canada, right? There, was, there wasn't one. And it was, um, I was talking to Ernie, Ernie Hudson mm -hmm. when I was doing Arrow, and he said, yeah, I came up here, and they were like trying to find crew from, and brought, brought crew in, et cetera, et cetera. Then all of a sudden, the 80s happened, the cruise, the 90s happened, it's got going bigger and bigger and bigger, and now... now everything is like, filmed yeah, in Yeah, so Vancouver, many things yeah. are there, yeah. So, <laughs> so you went to Vancouver for how long? Uh, for the first one, I was uh, uh, a month, and of course, well, I, I always do, like, when everybody's done, and I'm done, but we have to do the post-production, especially because my character is mainly CGI. So for me, it goes like for like seven months, all in all, in both movies. So did they? Did they? When you sent in your tape, was it a videotape yeah, or was it, it was a video? So it's a video. So you actually did it. Yep. Because, ha, ha, so let me tell you, I'm kind of curious because everybody puts their tapes down differently. What did you do? Go into your living room and put the tape up, or no, just <laughs> for the first? Because I want to hear that stuff. No, no, for the first one, I just taped myself like exactly in the like, living room because I didn't kind of like you know get into those things that professionally. You know, I was just like, okay, you know, on my phone. <laughs> And it was just a monologue, so I didn't need nobody to give me lines or something. So I just did it in my living room, like normally, and then I sent it back. Because for this role, they needed to see you. Uh, for the CGI, you need to do simultaneously the, the, the voice and, of course, the motion cap, the, the motion capture and the facial expressions and everything else. So right. you do it like every single other role. Uh, but of course, for, this, for the 140 things, then I had like to go and you know take a studio and like cameras and like to be as professional as I can be. Right. You know, I take all the time that I have. So you got the roles. Tell me a little bit about the filming of it, because obviously doing CGI mm -hmm. is is changing as we do it now. You know, what I mean, before you had to have green screens, you had to have a lot. Did that? Did you work on the motion capture with having the good dots all over you? Yes, and dots in your face. The, the really funny suit that you need to wear. I had like to wear some heels because of the height of the character. Even though I'm six five, I had like to put much more on, on like the the big heels and some really weird ball on my head which goes makes me like seven something when you when you see me from the side <laughs> no, it's no, really, it's, it's huge yeah but it's really hard to walk and generally do anything but but yeah cgi even like from the first uh, first part to like the second the sequel so many things change you know so so yeah how yeah. in what sense it, 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 technologically you know like with, with, on the first one you had like to do all these things as you said you know like on the green screen with like of course the uh, colleagues and partners and everybody, you know, being there. And this, on, on the second one, you had like to, there was like some new things and like giant balls. I don't even know how do you get in, the, how do you call those, which, which you get like hundreds of photo, photo cameras and things. And you start like, there's like so many parts of the process, you know, just like for your face, facial expressions, but then like for your movement and on and on. And of course you do it on the set, of course. But then again, you have to go back in the post-production. So for me, the filming is not over until like a few months before the right. premiere. And so in the post-production, did you have to revoice or did you have to, you know, I mean, and were the other characters dressed as they were in the film or did they also have some CGI elements? The, uh, for example, uh, Josh Brolin had, it depends on the character, you know, oh. but some of them were like totally, you know, casually dressed, you know, just because it focuses on me and doing all the interactions and everything like it was directly on the scene. It, it, mainly you just add some lines and it's, uh, because the, you know, 
the helmet with the cameras and everything else, it gets like the voice and everything else so brilliantly good. So it's just needed for some te technical things, Stuff, you know, right. and if they need some new add-ons with like lines and so on. Right. Uh, I, I'm guessing you're, there might be an, a third coming out at some point because when they start uh, doing all this stuff, you don't have to say if you don't. I mean, yeah, that, but I'm just kind of well, uh, it's done extremely well. It's it made a lot of money, which yeah. is really important everywhere. But uh, it's a huge franchise that was supposed to be like an underdog. Nobody believed yeah, yeah. that Deadpool is going to be like yeah. huge as as it, as it is now. But now with this merger between. Uh, Disney and Fox. Fox needs to, wants to keep everything like R-rated and you know uh, to stay the same. So of course, you know, it's just a question of time when we'll have when we will have a chance to announce again the Deadpool three and of course the X Force, which was assembled in the end of Deadpool two. So tell me about X Force. What? What? Tell me a little bit about it. What? It's it's just a you know a group of <laughs> people that survived Deadpool two, but it's. <laughs> What, the jokes? Huh? It's, it's the jokes, yeah. And the fight with Juggernaut and the funny thing when everybody in the sequel died <laughs> in, in, in like 20 second scene, but because Deadpool now has this like uh, time machine, so we'll see if he brought them all back or not. Right. But it's an amazing, it's something like, it's a it's an R-rated X-Men team in a way. So I think it's it, that can be like really well, uh, 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 um, how to say that, like, Really interesting approach to the X X Men. What films. about the action in, in X Men? I mean, how did you get involved in any of the action? Yeah. I mean, some of the yeah. action. And how do, how do you feel about doing action stuff? I love it. I love. It. I mean, in my life, I did so many of my own stunts, and you know, I kind of, I, I don't. Of course, I don't want to get hurt or something like that. But it's much more, you know, genuine when you do all the things that yeah. you can do. So I finished the Academy of Dramatic Arts in Belgrade in Serbia for four years. So we had like really good. Uh, scene combat. I don't know how you say yeah, stage, stage combat. That. Stage combat. Yeah. yeah, stage combat. And and for example, like for the, sh the shows like 24. So I had like so many action scenes, and then and, and, you know I'm kind of feeling really well, and I love to do it. And you just it pumps you with a lot of adrenaline, which you really need and you want to do. So what do you what do you think is the most important thing in stage combat, in the sense of working with somebody or or if you're working on your own to do like some fall through a let's say a window well, some actors won't go through glass because i've seen them you know be hurt that's, before that's but, but what's 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 your what's your take on how to approach an action sequence first of all the focus uh and you know to know yourself to know your limits to you know 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 how to you know Preserve yourself in a way to protect yourself and the partner and to have like, you know, if, if you know when to stop, if you know all the details and everything needs to be like a mathematical equation, you know, and if you if we want, you know that better than anyone, <laughs> you know, how to how to do these things. But the point is to just, you know, don't get, I know some actors that even hurt me, you know, because they just get into the, the rage or whatever they think it is or and they don't care so the point is to it's, it's like a dance it's like a really beautiful choreographer choreographer Choreog choreography Cho choreography in which you know you do a, a a beautiful dance which looks from 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 the side like something that you like like really going on you mentioned something because <clears throat> when we used to do action sequences way back we're talking about in the 90s and stuff i mean i've done them since but in the 90s it was a slightly different thing i mean a lot today's they're bigger, they're faster, they're more technical. What do you think is the most important thing when you are doing an action sequence? Is it the action itself or is it the thing between the characters? How do you, I mean, you mentioned something which is interesting, which I talk about a lot, is when when you face somebody else, the ug factor gets in, which is like, and mm -hmm. it doesn't, and there's no control. How do you, how do you master the control while keeping an angry character uh, in, 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 or let's say you're angry and you're really violent in that. How do you keep the control for you? What's your? Is there a technique that you use, or is anything? It, it's generally, it's generally to practice the thing that I'm supposed to do as much as I can before, and then after all these things, when I talk with the, with, with the person I'm working with, to try to you know first like totally dry do all the scenes as much as many times as we can, and then to include because you know the, the extra acting or something that can just make even the scene bad you know because it's as you know that like in so many fights and so many action things you really don't need to 
it involves a lot of acting because your body and your moves are working for yourself for your, for yourself so you know some extra acting or something like that 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 can be more as a problem you can yeah, add it on later right. or just like do a, a huge shot so, so where face. did you get her when did you get her oh i got like i got like with uh, uh with an actor that was supposed to like hit me with an axe and you know the axe just slipped so you know like he hit me in my face and he could just like hold on with an axe you know he was supposed to kill me with that but you know it just and then what was the axe made of X was like was something like like rubber, but it's still still hurts. Still research, yeah, yeah. it's still you know it wasn't like a, <laughs> something really easy. Well, there's a lot, there's a lot of accidents that happen in movies. I mean, a lot of the time, like you said, what the preparation before is extremely important, and you go over and over and over again. I, what's really interesting to me is that sometimes some people approach it and say, "Well, if the stunt guys are going to take care of it, I don't really need to do, do this," and then your action, which is sometimes in your body that you mm -hmm. are not used to doing. If you don't practice it like you practice lines over and over, like you did 140 yeah, takes or yeah. something, doesn't come naturally. And that's, I think, when you have accidents that happen. Yeah, and you know, people think that those things are like really easy, and you know, everybody can do it. No, that's really wrong. You know, that's why, for example, we have like all these classes for four years of you know, learning how to fa how to fall down, learning how to you know, do a slap or like you know, punch in the face. So that's like something we need, really need to learn. It's not something that I saw it on TV. I can do it tomorrow. Right. No, it's like really hard. And it's same as acting. Like you need to make a thing real and thing alive. Well, Stefan, thank you for uh, joining me. I think you're probably going to have to zoom. Yeah, what are you going to do today? What are you doing uh, today? I'm just going like to pack my bags and flying. Oh to yeah, I'm, I'm out of here too. Yeah, yeah, like here literally too. in well, 45 minutes. Well, thanks, man. It's been thank really great so seeing you. Thank it's you so much. It's like brother. a pleasure meeting you, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Ever want to do a sword fight from your favorite film? Now you can. Learn from the best as the sword experience travels to convention halls across America, to ancient aqueducts and to historical castles of kings and queens of Europe. Sword professionals, budding bladesmen, and those who want to feel like an action hero for a day are ready to take part in the sword experience challenges. Experiences that will leave you breathless, literally. Sign up now at swordxp.com and just maybe you'll discover another you. Combat training, CGI, it's all interesting, you know, to hear Stefan talk about, you know, how an actor has to prepare for all those things that, um, uh, you don't really think about you know you look at an actor going oh, well he must know how to do that most actors don't necessarily know how to do action beats they right, have to be right, taught right. yeah it's weeks of training yes oh absolutely like you know it, acting is one thing like standing in front of a camera talking that's one thing but then when you have to act as you're throwing punches or act as you're you know blocking with swords that's something completely different because now your mind has to be in two places I'm sure you can attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talk about that in the Sword Experience Academy events, you know, in the performance, how, you know, you have to be at a certain angle and you have to do certain things in a certain way to sell it for camera because it's very different than real life when you're selling it for the movies compared to selling it for the camera. It's an entirely different um, uh, kettle of fish, as they say in England, um, because it doesn't translate. It doesn't, you know, I've been hit several times and looking at the dailies I'm, I'm looking at going that didn't work but you need to cross the line you need to be in a certain position to sell the action and it's like walking you get to get taught to walk again when you do action pieces and a lot of the time as I tell people at a five-hour sword experience you've done extremely well considering the fact that most actors get two three weeks worth of training right. to actually get up to the level of of what you see on screen. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's not just, oh, a couple of days and they're, they're done. Right, exactly. You know, most people don't have that type of coordination. Mm -hmm. uh, as you do it, like anything, um, I, have the, I have the privilege of uh, working with Mark Mikita from Fightology. Those of you that haven't seen, uh, haven't seen Mark's work or seen who Mark is, uh, Fightology.com is uh, one of the, um, one of the, uh, the, the site that he actually uh, uh, trains out of. 
uh, Filipino uh, sword, stick, and martial arts. Um, 53 years. He's a grandmaster. Amazing uh, gentleman. Uh, you know, I met him doing a Highlander convention. His knowledge of weapons uh, and stuff is is kind of impressive. And, um, you know, we really kind of clicked. And he's part of the sword experience now. And, um, you know, to train people, what I when I go to train with him or when I go to put a sword experience on with him, the knowledge that I get that he talks about, I think, oh, yeah, I hadn't really thought about it from that angle. Because so the sword experience events, the, the academy events, really are about getting different pieces of knowledge that you wouldn't necessarily get anywhere else. And uh, I even learn, I've learned so much teaching other people, more so than actually doing it. So there's there's a constant learning process that you go through through life when you when you're really passionate about something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean that's acting in general is just constant learning. And one of the beauty parts about acting is they always look for other skills as well. So if, what whatever skills that you have, don't discount those because they'll ask if you can you swim, can you play the drums, can, can you ride a horse, can you ride a horse. <laughs> it's all that stuff that if you're looking to get into acting. Don't discount what you already know and don't always, always be ready to learn. Like, you know, always take classes, always, you know, whatever you're willing to do, do it because it's always going to help you become a better you know, actor. The interesting thing is when you take drama school in England, for instance, and in New York and different places, drama schools teach you a variety of different things in acting. One is movement. Another one is script analysis. Another one is character descriptions. Another one is uh, what are your intentions? What are your obstacles? All these different things you have to learn as an actor. Put it into your work. And so it's layering all this stuff. And like David just said, you know, I'm a equestrian. I'm a swimmer. I'm All those things go on your resume because somebody might be looking for a swimmer who can act. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so there's a lot of different things. Commercials ask for that all the time. What voices can you do? What accents can you do? Mm-hmm. What uh, are your special skills? Do you do pottery? Do you do needlework? Do you, whatever that is, it, it is a skill that you have learned. And I think that's you can't discount that from anybody. If you can bring in authenticity to it, then by all means the more the more versatile you are the better chances you have at landing whatever you're looking for i mean you look at stefan i mean he talked about how he was how comic books were his things and and also he talks about you know and i think this is important for us to understand on the peace fund is what comics books did for kids for so for a lot of time comic books give kids an inspiration of being able to be something better than the, the situation yes. that they're in mm-hmm. and he you know, mentioned that about how what it did for him as a kid. Yeah. And that was one of his skills was mm-hmm. comic books. And, you know, later on, he knew what that character was. Therefore, he bought his, brought his knowledge of comic books or of characters to the role that he was going to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it worked out well for him. Anyway, next week, we will possibly be having Mark McKee to have a chat. I'm going to see if I can wrangle him <laughs> next week and have a chat with Mark. And so in uh, continuation of uh, this, uh, this, this uh, podcast, please uh, listen it, share it with uh, different people. We'd love you to uh, get different people's uh, opinions on what we can do. Write into us, tell us your stories, your inspirations, and uh, follow us on Sword XP. That's where we can hashtag us. Sword XP, and you can find us on Patreon. You can find us at swordxp.com, as well as on Instagram and on our Facebook pages. And we do things that most other people don't. We take you to different places to do retreats. We have a retreat coming up in Ireland in 2020 that uh, we are getting a lot of interest for right now, which is fantastic. Ireland is a beautiful place, amazing castles, amazing scenery. It rains, you might get wet, but it is an amazing experience. So all the other places we're going to be going to this year, you'll find on our site. And I hope you join us next week. And I might be talking to you from a totally different place because there are a lot of surprises coming up. This is Adrian Paul and David Bethke and Ethan Detmeyer on the board. We'll see you next week.